me. Yeah, he says a lot of times we stick, you know, the apples and stuff in cold storage for six months to a year before they actually go out to the grocery stores or whatever. So it's very f hard to find uh, a produce that, uh, you know, tastes good and has, you know, all of those great nutrients packed into it. It seems like nowadays it's, you know, the, the harvest is kind of bland. Um, you know, without a lot of nutrients in it, uh, you can tell that the process was rushed and, you know, there's some, something artificial about it. Um, it's just not quite right. Even after we go through all of this and then we come to the, the harvest again, now it doesn't stop either. Now we must continue the process all over again for the next harvest, for the next moment, for the next day, for the next year, for the next decade. So we're continuing over and over and over, you know, year after year after year of uh, farming the soil and making it fertile and producing, you know, um, strong and vibrant and nutrient rich uh, um, plants and vegetables to sustain uh, you know, those that come to the fertile soil or the temple or the community around. So it's an ongoing process. It's not something, you know, that we just do once in a while. Because if we allow the fields to turn to seed and then go back to plant, it's just going to be so much more difficult, you know, to, to get rid of all of the weeds that are now in the soil and to get rid of the stones and all the other stuff that are in the soil. So it's very important to stay current with this process. And unfortunately, in this day and age, uh, James Ford had wrote something the other day, um, and it was uh, about a, an article that was written about kind of the decline of um, the Protestant faith. And I think just in general, there's a decline in religions. And we can kind of see the fruits or the harvest that that's bringing in. Um, people feel separated, they feel isolated, um, they feel divided from one another um, about things that really aren't important at all. Um, divided because of color of one's skin or or one spiritual fertile ground, you know, or how much money one has you know, or what kind of job one has, or what kind of education one has, or what color robe one has. And it does not matter whatsoever. And there's that Baptist preacher. <laughs> it does not matter whatsoever. What my hope is, and what my efforts um, are geared towards, is creating fertile soil not just uh, where I practice or not just within my community although sometimes that's all you can do and that's fine because it's like throwing a stone in the middle of a pond those ripples go outward too but creating fertile soil for all sentient beings I mean that is our vow as a bodhisattva is it not you know yes you know there is no sentient being that really needs to be saved but Yet there's a lot of sentient beings that are suffered, suffering and um, need a lifeline, need something to, to give them strength, you know, to um, realize that within them uh, is the strength to overcome whatever obstacle uh, they find themselves within. And it's very sad to see people becoming more and more um, uh, empty and struggling to find something to give their lives meaning. And like I said, as that little boy collecting stones behind that tractor with my hands dirty and thinking in my head about, you know, how wonderful this is going to be, you know, we've lost that. You know, we've lost that where our hands are in the dirt you know, are creating change. We've lost that wonder, you know. We've lost that celebration of the harvest together. You know, let's share the, the, the hard work of, of the whole community together. 
um, or the whole world together. You know, we've lost that somewhere. And religion is just religion. It's just man-made and not to be disrespectful to um, uh, monotheistic uh, practitioners, but from a Zen perspective, it's just a bunch of rituals and just a bunch of theology that is, um, you know, put together. What, what really matters uh, is what's underneath it. What really matters is the harvest that um, it produces. Um, so it doesn't matter what faith you find yourself in or what tradition you find yourself in. Um, a little bit of structure, you know, in Zen we have structure. Sometimes people don't like it, but that little bit of structure, you know, gives us um, something to hold on to as we're going along through this process. Something to kind of get our hands into, to get our hands dirty, to start picking out stones to make it ours, right? And sometimes we need a little help creating that container because the world is so crazy sometimes and we're torn in so many different ways um, that it's hard to kind of see that fertile soil and it's hard to, to, to nurture it and, and to plant and to harvest and to take care of it. Um, so sometimes religion and spirituality allow us that structure that makes it a little easier for us to focus on our spiritual practice. A little easier for us to get up, you know, whether it's for Zazen or church on Sunday, or, or maybe you're just going for a walk in the woods and are just reconnecting with nature. You know, it gives us that, that extra scaffolding, you know, to hold on to, that extra step. Uh, to help us along the way. And in that way, religion and spirituality um, are much more um, because what they help us to do as tools um, is to go far beyond um, their philosophy or, or theology um, and into the experience of the harvest and the joy of the process and the work uh, to get to the harvest uh, together. Um, Sangha is such an important part of Buddhism and many times it's um, forgotten. Um, because think if we can uh, plant a small garden in the back of our house and take care of it, you know, imagine if we had our whole community. Sometimes they do in New York City and larger cities. They have community gardens, which are absolutely beautiful and they're so meticulously taken care of. But imagine if we could get, you know, the country or we could get the whole world uh, to get together and to um, uh, create this fertile soil and plant these positive and loving and compassionate seeds and then together as one sit down and enjoy the harvest. To me, this is what this koan is about, and um, I hope you find it as beautiful as I did. Thank you.